So everything should be working now. So we can start. Right, yes. Okay. So as you guessed and you already have the material for the whole week, today we are going to talk about state. Okay? Uh, state in React, how to handle the state. State is a very important topic because, in short, it allows us to remember something in our React components that can be used to change the application behavior. Okay? Until now, we only have props that are something that we basically pass along the components, but we cannot change the props. We say the props are read-only. Okay? And today we are going to talk about how to introduce state. And on uh, Thursday, we will have lecture as uh, it is uh, shown in the schedule. And we will continue about talking uh, about state, but in particular within the forms. Okay? Forms are the uh, components uh, that allow uh, the user to input some data. Okay? And we will store this data into text and we will discuss further about uh, this uh, um, how to handle the state with the forms. Okay? But today we will start talking about uh, state. Tomorrow in the lab, there will be lab, and you will uh, uh, start programming something in React, so converting your old web application developed directly in JavaScript within the browser, uh, you port it uh, in React. Okay? You just do this operation that we did the last time in last lecture for the example that we carry on during the lectures. Okay? Uh, okay, so next week there will be labs about the state. Uh, components and states. So how do we handle the state? Well, in React we will uh, handle them with hooks. So we will introduce what are hooks uh, and the most important hook for our application, which is the hook that handles the state. I recall you that uh, uh, functional component, uh, that are the ones that we have seen until now in React, are just pure functions that take just one parameter that, that is props, so all the properties needed by the component, and the properties are read-only, so we cannot uh, assign values to props, we just read the values. Okay? So we need to have a, a place where to store uh, uh, information. Okay? The fact that they are pure functions, it means that they compute the result only the, uh, on, um, as a function of what we pass as parameter, so the props, is that uh, the consequence is that they are pure function, no side effects, and let's say in theory they could not have a state. And in practice, too, because we will use a trick to introduce this state. Okay? Um, okay, so without the state, these uh, functional components are fine to render something. So you pass some information through properties and you define a view that depends on the properties, but you cannot really handle uh, stateful uh, interactions. Okay? So uh, you cannot store information in short. Ux has been proposed uh, quite a number of years ago um, in uh, React, but uh, um, um, nowadays are the way in which uh, basically uh, React works. So everybody is using Ux, and so we need to uh, learn how to use them. Okay? And they are also a, a, a simpler way to program in React compared to the old way. Okay? And there was a, a different way to handle a state uh, with class, component, etc. that we are, not, uh, uh, seeing, um, we are not seeing in this course because it's uh, quite old fashioned and uh, uh, nobody is using it anymore for new development. Okay? Um, and so we will focus on what is used today, which are OOCs, which are also simpler than the previous approach. So this is also an advantage and why they have been so widespread and, um, until now. Okay, so in short, they are a, an addition to function components, so the one that we saw until now, uh, to access uh, these advanced features, in particular, uh, today we will talk about state. Okay? Um, so hooks, in short, are special functions called by function components. 
A special function means uh, functions made available by the React framework. So we will need to import uh, these functions, in particular the use state, uh, that is the one we are talking about today. And we will call them uh, within our uh, function components, and so we will have this possibility to handle a state. There are many hooks. We, only, uh, we will only see the previous three hooks in this course. This is not uh, a very limiting choice. I mean, you can program almost all behaviors with just these three hooks. The other hooks are more for more advanced, uh, um, uh, let's say, um, functionalities that we don't really need in this uh, basic uh, React course, okay? You are free to use them, of course, but uh, as usual, but you need to, you are on your own, so you need to do, to know what you are doing, okay? And also explain it at the exam, okay? Uh, but we don't really need, you know, these hooks, uh, I mean, uh, handling the state and the life cycle of the component uh, is more than enough. And the context is just, uh, let's say, a utility uh, to simplify some passing of properties uh, around in the application. So the, the third one is even optional. You don't really need to learn it if you don't like it. Okay, so today we will focus, of course, only on state. So this is the big picture. So we have React components. Uh, well, uh, actually one component, React component. The React component defines an element tree. Remember what we wrote last time in the uh, return statement. Return with some JSX, which is uh, a, a number of components with a single root. That is why it, it, it's a tree, okay? Which, of course, can use other components, okay? As we saw last time. And this React component receives props and that's fine that we saw, uh, that is what we saw last time. But, uh, well, forget for the, for the moment about the context. Uh, today we will add this uh, part, the state, in which we will not only receive values from React, but we can also store values. That is why it's a state and not just a prop which is read-only. So you see the arrow is just one direction. I mean, one, uh, yeah, it points only uh, towards the right. Okay, and the context is just another way to pass props, uh, and, but we will discuss uh, about it uh, later in the course, briefly. Okay, um, so state is where a component holds uh, data locally, and when the state changes, uh, usually the component needs to be re-rendered. So again, as we saw last time, React uh, detects uh, the fact that uh, uh, components uh, get different properties and so run those components. So invoke the function corresponding to the components and gets the return value. And this makes React re-render the part of the, your application that is controlled by that component. And in the same way, if you use a state, so a variable that has been declared as a state in, uh, in the appearance of your component, React will understand, will know that the state has changed and every time we will rerun your function to get the, uh, the return value that is the uh, set of components that need to be shown in your application, okay? Um, and the context we will see it later, okay? Um, so as we said uh, in JSX, uh, Every attribute is converted to a prop, but the fact is that uh, all the props are read-only, okay? Uh, props can contain anything, including handler to functions, as we saw last time, okay? So you can pass anything you like uh, from one component to the components uh, 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 below that uh, part of the tree, okay? Um, you can even pass... Uh, uh, reference to other React elements if you need it, okay? Uh, but this is not really important for us. At the moment, uh, we need to understand that uh, when we need to um, uh, store some information, we need to have some special way to handle this information because uh, React 
must be notified of the fact that we stored this information, so the function is not pure anymore, okay? So it has a side effect because it stores information outside the function, okay, outside the scope of the function. And um, th this, um, uh, this information needs to be made available to the function when it's needed and needs to be monitored by React uh, for changes. So when the information changes, the component needs to be rerun, okay? So um <coughs> to define a state variable, we use this use state hook, which in, in, in short, it's a just a function, okay? Uh, defined within the React library that we import in our uh, project, in our file, where, where we need it, and we call it within the code of the component, okay? And what is a state? The state is simply an object or a value, a JavaScript value or object, that contains local data which is private to the component, and that can be changed only by the component itself at least, uh, let's say, in the basic version, okay? So the state, each state is associated with a certain component in the React application, okay? So we call use state in a certain component. That state is bound in a certain sense to that component, okay? So let's uh, have a look at a very simple example. And as usual, today we will uh, um, develop an example, so we will uh, carry on with our, uh, um, you know, programming example, uh, question and answers, and then next week in the lab you will try on your example the films uh, library, okay? Um, okay, use state. How we use it? Well, first remember to import it, okay? Not very difficult, but if you don't do it, uh, you, you'll see an error <laughs> when you run the code, either directly in Visual Studio Code or in the console of the browser, okay? Because you call a function which is basically undefined if you don't import it, okay? And use state. Um, uh, le let's start from the simple things. It returns uh, two values, okay? One is the actual value of the state, and the second one is a reference to a function to be called to change the state, okay? So this, is, this on the left is a, a, a destructuring assignment, so just a JavaScript con construct, okay? So in short, it's a way to get two return values from a function, okay? So we assign to an array, and the first value is just the um, state value that can be anything, a number, an object, and so on, an array, etc. And then the second is a reference to a function that has been created by useState and the, the handler has been returned to us and we will call it to change the state, okay? And the parameter is just the initial value of the state. We will come back to this in a minute. Okay, so let's say in some ways we defined a state within our component which is called the short text here yeah. and of course it takes props as usual and we can use the value hidden wherever we like as the props, okay? The only difference is that this is a state and so we don't need to write props dot something because it's a variable defined within the function and so it can be used as it is, okay? Um, and also the function can be called wherever we need to use it, okay? The only thing we cannot do is uh, assign a, a new value to the state directly. So we cannot write hidden equals to something, okay? We always need to call the function returned by the React hook, so the use state, to change the state, okay? The, the reason is very simple. It's because React needs to be notified of the fact that the state has changed, okay? And so we cannot just simply assign a value because it's just an assignment for JavaScript and nobody gets notified of anything, okay? If we 
call the React function to change the state, React gets notified of the fact that we would like to change the state, and so it starts all the update operations needed to update the virtual DOM and then the actual DOM, and so the appearance changes according to the new value of the state. Okay? So um, let's have a look at the example. This is a very easy example, a short text. So in short, it's a span. So it's an HTML tag that uh, um, includes uh, uh, something in line, okay? So typically text, and which renders differently depending on the value of a certain variable, which is actually this hidden um, uh, variable, which is uh, called hidden. And if it's true, what is rendered is uh, a, a part of the text up to props of max length. This, this space shouldn't exist. I should fix the slides, okay? This is just a max length. Uh, a, this is a props that should be passed by who is using the component, so the, sh the short text component, okay? So in short, you have a long string and you would like to show only a part of the string, let's say 10 characters, for instance. Or, um, okay, or you can use um, uh, the, f the full string, so props, text, okay? Again, the string to be shown is passed as a props, depending on the value of hidden, okay? And um, so that's the string, and then you have, um, what do you have? Yeah, uh, another string, actually a link, a means anchor in uh, HTML, so it's a link. So if you click this link, we set two different handlers. So if this part of the string is hidden, so if hidden is true, we only show the string more, okay? If you click on more, you will set the state of hidden to false, and so you will re-render the whole component, and you will show the full text, so hidden will be true, no, hidden will be false, okay? So uh, you will go to props text, okay? And you will render the link with the uh, word less and not more, and you will have a different handler with set hidden true. If you click on less, you will again set the state to another value, uh, so true, and so again, you will render only part of the props text, and you will render the string more and not the string less, okay? So apart from the state, this is standard way of uh, writing a component in React. Depending on the props, we decide to render something or something else, okay? But we add an additional variable, this hidden, that we can change uh, through React because we defined it as a state, Okay, and um, uh, the component will remember the state. Okay, this is also important. So until you click, every time you re-render the component, this function short text is rerun by React, and React will provide the function with the same value of hidden that has been set before, the last value. Okay. Um, so fine, the very simple component. We need to you know, understand this logic and try to apply it uh, for, for the rest of our application, okay? Um, so, let's have a look in more details uh, about uh, uh, how the use state works, okay? So, you need to import it, as we said, uh, and um, the cost hidden set hidden is creates a new state variable Hidden is the name of the variable. We are free to use any name we like, which is a valid uh, variable name in JavaScript, okay? And then set with the name of the, va the previous variable is the update function, so the function that we use to change the value of the state, okay? This is not mandatory, but very, 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 very recommended. So use the set plus the name of the variable, okay? First letter uppercase, the rest is the same. Because in this way, 
you understand something in your code, okay? You stick to these patterns w because in this way uh, you understand what you did or what others did in the, in, in re in the React code, okay? And the parameter true is the default value, the initial value of the state, okay? The first time you create this component, so React creates this component, needs to assign a value of this to this state. Otherwise, it then would be undefined because we don't know what value you, uh, to use in the beginning, okay? And so the initial value is the value that you pass to the useState function, okay? So it starts, the state starts in, um, uh, with the value true, okay? And I already talked about the array, the structuring assignment to assign two values at once, okay? So just to get both return values from a single function, okay? Um, so the state variable can have any type. This is, was a very, very simple example. So we use the Boolean value, which is the simplest value that we can use. But uh, the notable thing is that React remembers the value across function calls. So uh, you remember that every time the component needs to be rendered, this function is called again and again. And when it's called, you call useState, and React magically remembers that in that component, that variable, that is a state, had a certain value and it makes this value available to your function, okay? We will come back to this uh, magic part, just, uh, you know, giving you a hint on how it works, but this is in the internal workings of React. We can just assume that for some mm, magic, uh, in some magic way uh, it works, okay? At least for the moment. Um, the, ve the default value sets the initial value and type, uh, but actually this is just a, a JavaScript uh, variable. So I can put any value inside this JavaScript uh, value, variable, sorry. And uh, you know that uh, uh, variables can change type dynamically, okay? Because actually the type is not uh, given by the variable, but it's given by the value that we put into the variable. But of course, you know, again, to keep uh, your code uh, um, ordered, okay, so easy to understand. If you start with a certain type, you typically would like to continue with that type. Like hidden, we think it's a Boolean variable and we will not assign a number, okay? Because otherwise the code becomes a mess, simply a mess, okay? It's too complicated to understand. Okay, if we start with an array, if we start with an object, we'll keep uh, an object or an array within the, the, the code every time we set a new value, okay? Just to have the code, uh, you know, understandable, easy, easily. Uh, the variable name can be used inside the function, of course, and the set with the variable name, we replace the current state with a new one, and if the value is different, it will trigger a re-render of the component. Okay, but this is just React, okay? React will do it for us. So let's, um, let's have a, a look at another example, okay? Maybe even simpler example. Function welcome button props, use state and let English set English, okay? So English is a state variable and depending on the value of English, we will render a text hello or ciao, okay, um, uh, in, uh, within the button that we return as the return value of our component, okay? Uh, here, we didn't use the set English, so actually this state is uh, useless, okay? <laughs> but if we pass a set English somewhere in some other places uh, in our application, we will be able to change this state, okay? Um, so here, uh, uh, I mean, it's not that useful, okay? If we write the const English equal to true, the result is the same, but again, uh, I mean, the button will always be rendered as hello and not ciao, okay? But this is just an example on how to define a state, and then we would like to use this uh, set of the state to change its value, okay? Um, okay, so, 
all modifications to the state must be requested through the set variable function that is returned by the use state. But this is typically not a problem. I didn't see too many issues about this in, in past exams, okay? I mean, it's very simple to understand. You, you define a variable and you have the set for the variable, so I mean, everybody uses this, this set for the variable. Never, never modify the state variable directly, so you cannot just uh, write English equal to, hidden equal to, and so on, okay? Because you break the way in which React works. This is a limitation of React, a requirement of React, if you like, okay? Because React needs to be notified of the fact that you would like to change the state. And also, note that it will apply the modification asynchronously, asynchronously and not immediately. React will apply the modification asynchronously, okay? So in the previous case, you write set hidden false, and then if you have other code, well, this is an and, so it's not a good example, but if you, in, in, your, in, in your code, uh, for some reason you do like uh, set uh, English uh, uh, false, okay? And then you cannot assume that English is false immediately after the set. Actually, it is not, it is not set because it's just a request to React to change the state at a certain point, okay? And when the component will be re-rendered, the state will be changed, okay? So in the next uh, render iteration of React, the value that you get from the use state will be the new value of the state. And so in that case, you can use the new value. But it's not so difficult to understand. We need to, just to be a little bit careful, but I will point out when, when when you risk doing something wrong, okay? So, uh, we can update a state. So we have this set state, and we can change the state. We can change it uh, in two different ways. We can provide directly the new value of the state, as we did until now, and a new value will replace the current one, and as, uh, as I told you, this is a recommendation, but a strong recommendation, should have the same type because, of course, you use it in the same place. So if it was a Boolean and you make it an array, you know, you don't understand anything anymore, okay? So, um, as we did, set hidden, false. False is the new value, and that is fine, okay? Uh, so we can pass this head uh, state function with a new value, that's fine. We can also pass to this set state uh, a reference to a function. A function that is expected to take the old value of the state as a parameter, so this old state, and it will return the new state, okay? So React, when it needs to compute a new value of the state, it will understand that what you passed is not a value but a reference to a function. So it will run a function passing the old value as the parameter. It will run your function and it will take the return value and put it into the new value of the state. Okay? So this is executed as a callback, as we saw since the first lecture in this, uh, in this uh, course. And the new state depends on the old... This is useful when the new state depends on the old state, okay? So, the return value will replace the current state, um, and uh, uh, it's important that we have a possibility like this, since, uh, you know, you are, might not be the only one that calls the set state, but there can be, you know, different cases in which uh, somebody else calls uh, the set state, and you would like all the set states to be taken into account. Like, let's say you would like to add one to a value, steps or whatever you want, I don't know, likes or I don't know, what's, uh, scores and so on. You do plus one and so on, okay? Um, so the new value depends on the old value, okay? Uh, if you pass a function, this is automatically taken into account because 
the function takes the old value and computes the new values synchronously. Okay? So this is a synchronous callback. Okay? So it immediately computes a new value and the new value is set by React before doing anything else. Okay? So if you add, for some reasons, a second call to set steps that again do the same operation, you will call the second time, the, the second callback, and you will increment by one again. Okay? So let's say that at a certain time you have uh, the step that is the state that has a certain value, let's say 10, and you do set steps because you would like to increment it by one. And some, some, somewhere else you do another set steps and you would like to increment it by one again. In the end, you would like to have 12. You started from 10 plus one plus one, it's 12, right? But if you set immediately the value, like uh, um, step plus one, you know, remember that these operations happen asynchronously. You compute the value from, you already computed the value from the old value of the state, so you already do 10 plus one here when you do set something, so you have to set steps 11, okay? Not to set steps with the callback function that will compute values, the value later. You have two set steps uh, with 11, and so you end up having a state which is 11 and not 12, because you did the computation at the wrong time, okay? You need to uh, allow React to run all this set state when it's time, okay? And the only way we have to do it is uh, pass a callback function to be run when it's time to update the state. Okay. Um, okay, and if we would like to summarize when we should use a callback function, it's all the time, every time that the new state depends on the old state. Yes, that's a question, right? Is it possible to uh, repeat this comparison with the same type of uh, using the uh, state? Uh, to repeat this comparison, what do you mean by comparison? By Yes, yes, okay. So we can pass to the same set state function, either a, a value already computed, ready to be used, can be anything, a number, a boolean, a, an array, an object, and so on, or can be a function. React understands that you passed a, a function or a direct value. If it's a direct value, it's just set into the state. If it's a function, this is run when it's time to update your state, okay? Uh, and all the set that you do with function are queued, okay? But also, also this one, all the set that you do with the value are queued. But the fact is that if you compute the value, the final value of your state at the wrong time, you will get the wrong uh, uh, value to be set. As in the example I was, I was telling you before, if the, old, uh, the new state depends on the old state, when, for instance, you would like to do an operation on the state, plus one, minus one, you would like an, uh, to add an element in the array, you would like to remove an element from the array, uh, you would like to update a property, and so on. Every time the new state depends on the old state, you should pass a function that will be called to update the state when it's time to update the state. Okay? And we'll do the computation when you have the correct value of the state. Okay? So, it seems uh, at this point maybe it seems that uh, this uh, new value is mostly useless. Well, let's say it's not so common. Sometimes, most of the time we will have complex state uh, so well, where the new value will depend on the old value. But there are simple cases uh, like this hidden. Okay? Or when you have an immediate and simple value, like a Boolean value, or you would like to reset something, where you already have the value. It's either zero, true, or false, and I don't care what happened before. 
I just would like to set this state at this value, regardless of what happened before. That's the left uh, case. All, oops, all the other cases are the right one, okay? So we need to pass a callback uh, function. Okay, so if the logic of computing, for computing the next state depends on the current state, always use a function, okay? We will check this uh, at the exam, okay? Uh, but, I mean, it's reasonably easy to understand. Either you have an immediate value and you, will, you always want to set this value regardless of what happened before, or you should use a callback function. Okay? That's the simple rule. Okay? And, of course, a counter, a list, uh, and a state like this uh, is... Uh, typically managed uh, by using a callback because the new value depends on the old value, except when you would like to reset the value at uh, uh, a certain fixed value, like the counter set it to zero. I mean, if I want to set it to zero, there's nothing to compute from the old value. I would like to set it to zero, so just set counter zero, no callback, okay? Um, oh, I, if I write a callback, it's, it's useless. I can write a callback, but the callback returns zero regardless of what I pass uh, to the callback. So the callback is basically useless. Okay? Um, so remember this fact. Okay? And also the fact that you should return the value and not set the value because this is just a copy of the state. It's just a parameter of a function as usual. If you change the parameter of the function, you don't change the value that has been used, you know, when calling your function. But this is, this is given for granted, let's say, because uh, it's just basic uh, JavaScript uh, uh, function handling. Okay. Um, so, English, set English. Um, so, the button that we saw before, and we didn't see how to use the set English, right? We just saw, you know, the render uh, English, hello or ciao. Now, we would like to have a button that changes the state. It goes from uh, uh, true to false and vice versa, okay? But each time I click, I would like to change the state and just I mean, this is very simple example, so the two, there are just two states, so if it's false, I go to true, and if it's true, I go to false, okay? I need to write it in this way, so set English, let's take the old value, this is the old value of the state, E, and I return the, uh, um, the not uh, of the boolean value that I get from the parameter, okay? So if I get true, I return false. If I get false, I return true, okay? Remember, this is an arrow function, so the expression is the return value. If you put curly brackets here, things don't work because it will return undefined. You need to write uh, semicolon return E, okay? Uh, uh, return uh, um, exclamation mark E, okay? This is just the normal rules of uh, JavaScript functions, okay? Um, so also in the example that we saw before here, this is a return value, and also in the previous one, well, it's the, uh, no, the previous one had no function. So this is the only, ah, I, th this one, okay? So all step plus one is uh, the return value, okay? It's implicit return value of arrow functions. Again here, and again here, okay? And so, use state, true, true means the initial value, okay? So the first time the component is rendered, it will be shown as if English, as, uh, I mean, actually English is set to true. So it will render hello, okay? Um, okay, when do we change? the state? Well, typically we change the state depending on asynchronous events, okay? And typically events come f 
from two sources in our application. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, DOM event handlers, so in short, clicks and stuff like that done by the user, or data that we load from uh, the server, okay? Data that comes to the application from external uh, communication channels, typically from the server, okay? And so in the event handler, we put the set call that uh, changes the state. And this will be uh, called when um, the event happens. Like here, on click, we pass the toggle language as event handler, and the toggle language will simply execute set English, giving a callback function. So it will say, uh, uh, React, please uh, execute this callback function before re-rendering my component, okay? React will execute this function before re-rendering your component, so it will change the value of English, passing it here. It will take the negation, so if it's true, false, and vice versa. It will, the English, next time the component is re-rendered, will have the opposite value and the render will happen, okay? That's what, what is happening. Um, often implemented as an arrow function. Yeah, you can compact the previous uh, way of writing the function, especially if you don't need to do that many things, okay? Uh, when we handle simple values, it's easy to compute the new value, plus one and so on. If you need to handle an array, probably you will write a separate function because maybe you need more lines and you cannot write an arrow function, okay? But just for readability, okay? Everything works in JavaScript, but it's just readability, okay? Don't forget the initial parentheses here, okay? Because if you write set English without the initial parentheses and the arrow function, the function is executed immediately and that's wrong because we need to set an handler, not execute the function when we render the component, okay? This is a common mistake, but we, you will, uh, you will um, for sure notice it because uh, things don't work, so the handler doesn't work, because actually it's not set. I just set as the return value of this function of the set English, which is probably undefined. Okay, I don't know, we should check the React documentation. But we don't use the, the return value of the set state function. Use, so the f default value is used during the first render of the component only, never used in successive uh, renders. Okay, this is again important to notice. So this uh, initial value is set only the first time Second time, third time that we have this render, the function will be called, the same use state with the same initial value will be called, but React remembers that this state already exists. So it doesn't give you the default value, it gives you the actual last value of the state. Okay? Good. Um, what can we um, put in the default value? Typically a value, we can even put a function, but I mean, this is uh, much less useful, okay? Uh, because this function is just uh, run once. And um, I mean, um, I cannot really think of a simple example where, where we should uh, use a function in the initial value, okay? So, I mean, a, a, a typically you have an initial value that uh, is immediately available and you put it as a parameter of the use state uh, function of React. Uh, the value can also be computed from the props, uh, as we, so, no, we, no, we didn't have it, but we will have it in the example, okay? So we can say that the initial state is a props uh, uh, initial counter value, whatever, okay? Uh, just beware of one thing uh, uh, that, that is, uh, uh, you know, props may change between one render and the next, but the initial 
value of the state, I mean, yes, will be recomputed but not used, okay? So the, in the, uh, the state is initialized only once, okay? It will happen to us uh, when we will try to edit uh, something in our application uh, I, uh, next time, okay, next lecture. And we will, mm, you know, see how to solve it, okay? So in general, it's not recommended, but sometimes it's useful. So we will do, we will do it, but uh, um, let's say carefully. <laughs> We, 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 we need to understand what we are doing, okay? This is a quite a, a source of bugs uh, for, um, you know, your application when we sub you submit it at the exam. Uh, I mean, they are not really big, uh, I mean, uh, big problems. It's just that uh, something don't get updated in the way it is shown as you would expect because you change the property and you expect that something changes in the render. But if you use it as a, an initial value of the state, the state exists and it doesn't take the new value. You should find a different mechanism to update uh, the render. But nothing really difficult. I mean, if you test your application enough, you will encounter this issue and uh, you will think about it uh, and you will fix it. Okay? You just don't need to use uh, the props as the initial value if you think that this prop should change the state afterwards, after the component uh, has, uh, is, uh, exists in your React application. Okay? But again, next week uh, uh, we will talk about the component life cycle, so when they start to exist, when they uh, go out of the DOM tree and so on, and these things will be clearer, will be um, addressed also, okay? Just need to be aware of these uh, uh, warnings, okay? So example, a counter with a state that contains the value of the counter, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, okay? And you would like to show the count number with three buttons. Reset, and minus, and plus, okay? So, let's see the difference, and then we'll come back to the initialization. So, count, count is just used in the render. It's a variable like any other variable. It can be used uh, during the render, so in the return statement. Button on click set count props initial count to reset. That's fine. Having a fixed value for reset is fine because regardless of what happened before, when we press reset, we know the new value of the state. Initial count, I don't know which value they, they like, but typically let's say it's zero, okay? This is fine, set with that value. When we would like to have this uh, uh, something that changes depending on the previous value of the state, we should pass a callback, okay? So the previous count is taken, we do minus one and we return the new value that is previous count minus one. In the case you press the, le uh, the minus button and vice versa for the plus button, okay? And if you try to write something like uh, count plus one or count minus one, uh, it's, not, it's not wrong. I mean, yeah, it's wrong in theory, but it works. It works until you don't press the button fast enough, okay? Because if you press the button very, very quickly, you will start losing um, uh, handlers, okay? So that means handlers gets executed, but they use the old value of the state, which has not been yet updated by the fact that you press the plus and minus. So you use uh, an older value, and so it means that uh, um, you don't get all the updates that you did with the button, with the click, okay? You should try this example. Maybe we can try it if we have some time, okay? I didn't prepare it, but uh, I mean, we, we could try it, and it's not that difficult, okay? But, you know, this is a race condition. It's difficult to, to test. You need to click fast enough, and React should be slow enough to pull together two, at least two uh, state updates together. And so you will lose one click, 
okay? So it means the click is captured, is handled by the fact that you use an immediate value and not a callback, you will lose the fact that you want it to do plus one or minus one, okay? So this is correct, and this is correct as well, as long as we remember that uh, in the beginning we started from this value, we don't expect that if we change the props value, the count value changes immediately, okay? It still changes for the reset button, so it will be updated for the reset button, but somebody has to press the reset button. It doesn't change until um, the, the component uh, uh, is destroyed and recreated, but this is a more a longer story that we will uh, talk about in in next lectures. Okay, not not this week. Okay, we can define multiple states. So this use state can be called more than once, even in the same component. And actually, this is a good practice, okay? Uh, if s some of you already used the React in the past, like uh, three, four years ago, you know that in class components, you couldn't define more than one state for component. It was quite uh, difficult to handle. These hooks also have the advantage that we can create as many hooks as we need, okay? This is very convenient because we can separate the different states that do different things, okay? So, uh, like we have uh, three different states in a component, we can define these three different states with three different use state calls. One can be a Boolean that is, I don't know, handling um, the, the, the show of some event, uh, of some elements. Um, count, a counter mode, uh, or whatever, okay? And they are independent. I can leave all the states as they are, and they can call a set only for one state, and uh, how can I call it for one state? Well, for each use state, there will be a set function that has been returned by the use state. So I just need to use the correct set state function that has been returned by the use state, okay? Uh, the component will render if any of the state changes, okay, and it is actually used in the uh, in the view, okay. No, it will change uh, anyway, okay. Sorry. Um, the important thing is that a new value is different from the old value, okay. If any state changes, actually. Uh, children components will render only if the props change. Remember the state is uh, uh, bound to a single component. It's not because I change a state in a component that all the children components of that one uh, gets re-rendered. The state belongs to one single component. If I use this state as a prop for the children, yes, the children that use that state will re-render because the props have changed, but that's because I use the state as a prop for a children component, for a child component. Um, but if I don't use the state as props for the children component, as long as the props of the children don't change, they don't get re-rendered. That's the React principle. Re-render the components only if the props change, and today we add only if the state defined within the component changes, okay? That's all. <coughs> and so now we have a problem, okay? So, uh, if the state is not within the component that we would like to change, or, or uh, let's say, uh, if we don't really know where to put the state because uh, the state uh, should uh, affect the, the appearance of many different components. Where do we put the state since the state belongs to a single component? Let's uh, take this example. This example is mm, 
simple essay in the logic on, on about how it works. You choose your game and you can choose only one game at a time. Okay? Only once. O only one game. Um, so either you choose chess or poker or blackjack or go. So there can be only one button selected out of the four. Okay? So how can I set, I mean, define and set a state ensuring that only one button is selected? I, I say that uh, the state should belong to a component, but where do I put the state? Should I put it into chess? Yeah, that's fine. I can, I can could, could have a state that says uh, true or false, so selected or not. So it's blue or, or gray. But then how can I ensure that uh, the others are not selected? Because the other components cannot access the state of chess because the state is private to chess, private to the button. And so the information about which button is selected may not be, cannot be in the button. It needs to be in, in some place where it is accessible to all the buttons, but we say that that is private to the component. And actually it is true. And so we should create a, a component that handle this state and that renders all the four buttons, passing as properties, uh, the information if the button is selected or not. And then we still have the problem on how to change the state because the state is not in the button. We cannot, I mean, it's difficult to write an handler that changes a state that is not in the component. In previous examples, we had the state in the component, so it was very easy. We had set count and we used set count. No difficulty, okay? Here, it's more difficult. So that's the way in which we solve the problem. And we see it for this very simple example because it's a more general way of handling this kind of problems where the state needs to be uh, put into a component and distributed to other components through props. Okay, so this is the game. And so we create, uh, okay, the button. Uh, that will have uh, attributes, uh, okay, fine. And, uh, and we have a button group that includes the four buttons and this will have a state. So we will do use state of this, uh, uh, in this button group and we decide what to put in this state. Since we have uh, four possibilities, uh, we will put uh, in the state a string which has uh, uh, one of these four values, chess, poker, blackjack, and go, okay? So the state in this case is a string. Could be a number, we could say one, two, three, four, but at certain time we need to, you know, convert this uh, one, two, three, four into names of the buttons, okay? So we will fill up uh, our code of uh, ifs, okay, if one is chess and so on, which is not nice, so let's keep it as a string, that's fine. So this selected is a state, and when uh, we create uh, the buttons, we use the buttons um, with props, uh, and one of the props that we pass is selected, and we will have uh, uh, the true value only for the props of the button which is actually selected, so whose name corresponds to the uh, value of selected, okay? So here we, we solve the problem of, uh, you know, ensuring that only one button is selected because when we pass the property selected to each button, we uh, set true only for one out of the four buttons, okay? Um, and that's okay. But then, how can we change the, the choose button? Cho uh, that means, um, 
somebody clicks on the button and the handler of the button is within the simple button or button component. I don't care, but uh, the important thing is that it's not in the button group, right? It's just below in the single buttons. So how do we allow this uh, state to be changed by handlers that are in the children component? Well, Button, grab, button group, so the parent component must offer a method for changing the chosen option. And we pass this method as a property to the children component. So each children component, we receive a prop, which is a reference to a function, which is actually the set selected function. So the the function that is returned by the user state of React that allows us to set the new value of the state. Okay? So it's true that the state is private to the component, but the function, the reference to the function that set the state can be passed around as, it, it can, as the state value can be passed around with properties. Okay? So we pass to children properties that can include the state and can also include the reference to the function that changes the state, okay? JavaScript allows passing reference to functions. There's no problem for this, right? Okay, so we will pass an additional prop that will be called by the handler of the buttons to set the state, okay? Um, so, this is how we solve the problem. So in the button group, we have um, the state. So we will have a const, uh, um, uh, what's choose state cho what's the name of the selected, okay? We will have const selected, set selected equals use state, and in the beginning you set one of these, let's say chess, okay? So that's the initial value. And then you write a, a, a function, or you can even pass directly this function, so either the chose button or the set selected directly, that's fine, uh, depending on how you would like to implement it, uh, if you would like to implement with an index or with a name, just be careful, if you, if you keep the, the string in the state, you need to convert an index to the state, or you need to receive directly the string, the new string, okay? Um, but in any case, you pass a function like this choose button, okay? Um, as an additional property to your button components, okay? Um, and in your button, you will do on click, so you will set an handler for the on click, and you will use the function passed as prop, props to your component with the parameter that depends on the button. Here they chose to use an index, so actually, well, the set selected, uh, so the selected here in this example is a number, okay? I mean, it's up to you. You would like to use a, a string, use a string. You would like to use a number, use a number, okay? So if you would like to use a number, you, here you pass props index. If you would like to use the name, you, here you pass props name, okay? Just be consistent. Of course, you need to know how to use the functions that are passed to you by properties, as, uh, using properties, okay? As usual. When they pass you a reference to a function, they need to tell you how this function works. And if you pass it yourself, it's easy because you define the function and you know how to use it. If they pass the function to you, like the use state, they need to have a manual, so uh, 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 a document where they say, this function should be used in this way. It receives this parameter, it returns this value, okay? It should be called in this case. If you define the function, it's implicit. It's uh, you that decides how make the thing work. And if you 
do um, um, if you use an external function who define the function needs to tell you how to use it okay so design hints for state well first uh, hint is very simple try not to use the state but I mean not very convenient because we are talking about states so we would like to use states but I mean try not to use too many states okay when it's not needed when you can handle things using properties that's better okay because properties are more immediate you specify them if they change the component changes and if they don't change the component stay the same but if you really need to uh, use a state as we saw in these examples you need to remember some information like the, the way in which something is shown the language uh, the counter the selected button and so on that is a state you cannot do anything about this so you need to use state move the state to the common ancestors this is called state lifting it's not uncommon in react application having a state in a component and this state is modified by children component actually I would say it's very very common not just uncommon it's very common because you might need the state in different places in your application and if you need to pass the state through props that is the only way in which you can pass the information to children components you need to put it at least in the common ancestor in the common parent component and sometimes the only common parent component is the first one the root the app okay so it's not uncommon to have a lot of states in app okay I would say it's not so convenient but for this uh, for this course we don't have alternatives if we would have you know six additional credits we could talk about how to handle complex states and stuff like that for this course we need to stay with the uh, you know mm, with this uh, we cannot solve this issue in a simple way and so it's perfectly fine to have uh, most if not all the state defined in app so in the root component because typically you use it uh, a lot uh, in your application okay when we will have data as uh, we will do today we will put the data in app or maybe just in a component below app but not very not so down in the component tree okay uh, and when you need to update the state you pass down through co through properties the callback functions that needs to be called to update the state as we just did with the example of the four buttons so we pass a props that is a function to be called in the event handler to modify the state that's all that's more or less how state works in react okay so Mm, not so difficult to understand of course we need to practice and we will practice in the second part of the lecture uh, you know by, by coding and um, you will get used to this behavior it's not a big problem okay um, so some heuristics for state lifting well uh, presentational components a component that should show you information should only use uh, state that is needed for presentation like uh, you would like to hide something or show something that is something just related to how to show stuff okay that state can stay in that component but the state that contains the information for instance or other states should not be there in the presentational component presentational component should be simple okay uh, application components so it means all the other uh, components or so container components as as before in the case of the button can contain states that is uh, um, uh, a state which is needed by the application to work correctly like for the button the four buttons the state is needed to ensure that only one button out of the four is selected okay and this is also convenient because it centralizes the place where we store the information which is not bad in general and it's the single source of truth for the state 
Very important thing, maybe we should add it to the slide. Uh, don't duplicate a state. So a st you should only have one state that does one thing, okay? If you have two states, it's like if you have two variables in your code that are supposed to contain the same information. You only run into problems, okay? That's why you should have only one state uh, and if it's needed, you go up in the component tree and you go up to the up level, so the root, and you put everything there. So there are single place where you have the state. Most errors happens because you have a duplicate state, okay? Typically not at the exam, but in the lab, maybe you decide, well, I put the state here, but then, uh, no, it's better to put it there, and you forget to delete one, or maybe you think, uh, well, when one changes, I update it with the props, the other one, and so on, you only create a complicated <laughs> code that uh, uh, actually doesn't work and it's difficult to maintain. But that's the same exact thing that happens when you have um, multiple variables that contain the same information, okay? In, a, in normal pieces of code, okay? So try to avoid it. Okay, last uh, set of uh, slides, but they are very quick, and then in the next lecture we will code uh, for the, uh, for one hour and plus and more. Okay, sometimes uh, the state uh, that we need to handle is an array, okay? It's very common because uh, you will see that in state we will keep uh, the data that is shown by our application, like the list of answers, like the list of films, uh, and so on, because it will be loaded externally, and so it will be set when it's loaded, okay? And uh, this thing will be done uh, uh, later in the course, but we'll try to, to keep it into the state because we, we can, already manipulate some data in the state, like uh, change the list of films, the list of answers by, for instance, deleting one film, which is the easiest thing to do, okay? And so, what do you keep in the state? Uh, you keep uh, a complex object, actually an array, okay? You can also keep an object. Well, in this case, very common to have arrays because you have list of things, okay? So how to handle arrays in a state? Well, there's uh, uh, one addition I think we need to mention about the set state of React. Well, React always need to have a new reference when you set a state, which is not an immediate value, so it's not a number, a string, a boolean. So if it's an array on an object, you always need to change the reference to the object or to the array if you changed the content of the state, okay? So, in short, every time you would like to update an array or an object in a state, you need to create a new array and then copy all the stuff of the old array in the new array, okay? Um, and uh, if you change something like objects or values, you need, um, I mean, objects or arrays within the array, you need to create new arrays and new objects, okay? Why is this uh, required by React? Because React tries to be efficient, okay? Efficient means that to check if a state has changed, uh, no, it compares uh, the first level, so, is the reference to the array the same? Yes, it assumes uh, that nothing has changed within the array. It doesn't uh, go into the array and iterates over all the array content. Because the array can be big. There can be many entries in the array and so on. Okay? Um, <coughs> so that's uh, uh, a principle that uh, uh, React imposes to us. And we need to be aware of this, because if we don't change the reference to the array, React may not understand that the actual value has changed. This doesn't happen with simple values, because simple values can be compared immediately. If it's a Boolean, you compare true with false, 
either it's, it's true or false, okay? If it's a number, I mean, either it's equal or not. If it's a string, either it's equal or not. But with arrays and with objects, you know, you cannot compare, I mean, you can compare the values, but you are actually comparing the references to these objects or arrays. So you need to change the reference, and changing the reference means create a new array or new object. And the same has to be done for all the arrays and objects within the array and object. So recursively until the place where you change something, okay? Because React uses a recursive algorithm, so it says, it says that the reference to the array changed, okay? So I need to iterate over the array to understand what has changed in the array. And it goes into the array, and it checks every value of the array. And if it's an immediate value, the check is immediate. But again, if it's an object, like for a complex a set of values, it, changes the ref it, it checks the reference to the object. And if the object has changed, we need to tell React that the object has changed. How? Creating a new object. Okay, so a new reference. So in short, use a new array as the value of the property, so as the value of the state. <coughs> and then since, you know, typically the new value depends on the old value, unless you really want to reset everything. So the new value is empty array. Okay, no need, to for, no need uh, for the callback, but Otherwise, you need to use a callback to change the value of the state. And there are three typical cases, add, update, and remove. Add is very easy, okay? <coughs> so we have use state, and we have uh, something to add at the end, S a callback, old list, old array, return, well, actually, probably we should use the, the brackets, anyway. Old list, concat, new item. Remember, concat adds the element at the end of the array and returns a new array. That's important. If you are unsure, go to the documentation, like uh, Mozilla Developer Network, MDN, and check what is the function doing. Concat returns a new array. Don't use push. Push is wrong. Uh, for two reasons. First, it returns the number of elements, not an array, so it would be wrong in any case. And it modifies the array in place. We need a new array, okay? So no push, okay? Concat or use the spread, okay? Open a bracket and use the spread and add, so in this way you can also add in the beginning and not at the end. Concat adds at the end, okay? So this add items. Updating items. Use a map. Map iterates over the array. And in short, in the map, you leave everything uh, unaltered. So nothing changes unless it's the element that you need, okay? So if it's the element that you need to change, you do your modification. Otherwise, you leave it as it is, okay? And this is fine to leave it as it is, because React will check it. It's the same, fine, it will go to the next. But remember, map returns a new array, so we are safe in this case for setting a new array. And if you have an object, it's fine to return the old object, return item, okay? But if you need to change something in an object, you need to create a new object open curly bracket and set the new parameters. Or you copy the old object, object assign, empty object, old one, and another with the new props, okay? But we will see this because it's in the example of the uh, um, question and answers, okay? And removing, so last, last slide and then we will break for, for, for the hour and a half. Removing items. Well, you have filter, filter again, returns a new array. That's why we insisted a lot in the beginning of the course about this functional method, because they are very convenient here, okay? And also in other places. Map, filter, and uh, filter basically returns uh, 
um, puts all the all the elements of the array in the new array if the condition is uh, uh, true, okay? And if it's false, it, it doesn't put the old element in the new one, okay? So you just need to say, uh, uh, to write a condition for we, uh, that evaluates uh, false uh, for the element that you would like to remove, okay? And you can also use the spread, uh, um, um, I mean, the, the structuring assignment, so the spread operator, uh, for removing stuff, okay? In this way, like you would like to remove the first one and you assign what is uh, here, that is the old value of the state uh, to the second part of the list and you return the second part, okay? And you, will, you, you take the first element out and you can do the same uh, for, for many other elements, but this, in this case, you care about the position. In the previous case, well, yeah, you had the position, but you can use uh, more complex uh, comparison operations uh, to decide which element should be eliminated, like a, an ID or whatever, okay? So, I invite you to reflect a little bit during the break, okay? We can break for 10 minutes, something like this. If you have questions, of course, you're welcome to answer. And then we will dedicate the second part of the lecture entirely to introduce the state in our application and develop something interesting with the state in our application, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, the, the example is already online, so if you would want to download it from the GitHub or pull it from GitHub, it's already there, okay? So let's break for 10 minutes, thanks. <laughs>